Meet Anti-Gravity. It's made by Google and not just another walk or VS Code, which is why I want to try it today. For this video, I'll use Anti-Gravity for three things. Firstly, I'll try Agents. Then I'll try it for Vibe Coding using Gemini 3.0 to create an app idea. Finally, I'll use it for a week just to code and see what it's like. You might be thinking, what makes Anti-Gravity so special? It's built to be an agent-driven IDE with a dedicated agent manager. This allows Anti-Gravity to create agents and sub-agents to complete tasks in parallel. It also has a dedicated Chrome extension that allows the agent to connect straight to your web browser. And finally, it connects straight up to your terminal, meaning it can debug issues and solve them on the fly. Now let's slow this down. I'm going to start here in Anti-Gravity's Agent Manager. Unlike other code editors where the code is first and foremost, with maybe a sidebar for the conversation, in Anti-Gravity, you actually have this Agent Manager, which is this central hub for managing all your code and agents. When I request a change, I can follow along with the agent, or I can view the task list or even open up the IDE and then have a look at exactly what's changing inside, similar with how you would with Cursor or VS Code. The main difference is I can keep running the coding IDE in the background as the agent manager is now controlling that along with a web browser and a few other things. Another benefit of this approach is that we can now run multiple queries in parallel, sort of like multiple chat windows and tabs. I can request additional updates here to my portfolio project and these will be also running in the background too. But What's more is that I'm not limited to just the single workspace here for my GitHub portfolio. I can open up a completely separate workspace on a different project and start working on that too. This is where the benefits come into play. Since agents are doing larger and larger tasks over a longer period of time, it's beneficial to be able to work on multiple projects where you're kind of the project manager requesting the AI to complete different tasks on your behalf rather than manually going through and doing all these things yourself. Here's one I asked the agent to do earlier, adding a delete function to my startup app. Before it starts, it creates a task list of all the things it'll actually do before it completes this change. On the right panel, I have review changes, and here I can see exactly which parts of the code have changed with line revisions added in, very similar to how you would view things in GitHub. And there's also this hidden option tucked in on the right hand side for artifacts, which not only shows the file changes themselves, but also the task list and a walkthrough of everything after the change has completed. And this is the kind of thing that's perfect to put into GitHub before you're doing a push so that the documentation actually shows what's changing. And if I want to be more hands-on, I can open the code editor. Here, this is pretty much just like a VS Code. I can see the files that are being changed and I have my chat dialogue on the right-hand side here. I'm going to ask it to start up the dev server so I can test this change out. And here it's done that. I can open up the dev server URL head over here and test out a new query where I've added in a canvas for this sort of pricing list. Head to the main section, select delete, which is the new function, and there it is. It's even added in a nice pop-up to confirm I want to delete an item. Once I'm done checking the code, I can open up the agent manager once more. My recent chat history is still here and saved, and I can select that it's done a good job. Quick pause, I want to introduce to you the Framer Creator Micro. It's a compact and powerful macro pad developed by Framer and Work Louder. And it's essentially a creative control device with 13 different types of keys that are customizable, as well as a 2D joystick and dial that helps creators perform tasks faster. So let's check it out. The Framer Creator Micro is a pretty small device, but that's on purpose since it's made to be easily accessible and customizable. It connects by USB-C, but it's also wireless and has some nice keys and LED lighting, so this looks pretty good with the aesthetic of my desk. I connected it to my Windows PC via Bluetooth to see how it works when building a Framer website, and the first thing I needed to do was install the drivers, which has a piece of software here, letting you set exactly which keys do what. It also allows you to customize these or use a preset that's already been set. There is this 2D joystick which you can customize with a radio menu that shows up on Windows depending on where your mouse cursor is. The keys themselves are right now set up as quick actions. So if I select plus, I can quickly open up to add an element to the page. Or if I select the database button, then it takes me to collections. And if this wasn't enough, I can also swap out keys and customize the behavior myself. 
Hotkeys are the bread and butter of making tasks just a little bit faster, and this is ideally what this device is about. While you could use this macro pad just for building websites, the true strength comes in the fact that you can customize it. With the software itself, you can set up any macro or keystroke to a button press, and this means that I can start using it in other software. Like often, I'm using Figma before I move websites to Framer, and what I've done is set my own custom hotkeys for adding things like text, rectangles, frames, and other things, as well as just being able to zoom in and out of the canvas, since this is the way I like to use it. Though it does come with a preset for Figma, so if you don't want to manually create those macros yourself, you can just use the preset ones. A big thanks to Framer for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn more about the Framer Creator Micro, then check it out in the link in the description below. Another feature the Anti-Gravity IDE has is Playground. It's a place where you can test out different ideas without having to apply them to an actual project. Here, I'm going to open up the Playground and ask it to create a simple button that looks kind of like the TikTok theme. Since this is a pretty simple request, it's just going to create a simple task to create an index.html file where it'll draw that button out based on my request itself. I can see the code it's generated here on the right hand side and it's also requested to open up the browser so it can test out the code. Let's actually have a look at how the anti-gravity browser works. It loads the page immediately. I can zoom in and test the button out myself and if I head back to the agent manager and select a view, I can see the recording of that button in play. Finally, I can head to the walkthrough file where everything that has been done is summarized along with a GIF showcasing the button in action. Pretty impressive and I definitely want to see the limits of this browser and how it works on larger projects. Let me take a closer look at the coding IDE. It does come with access to Gemini 3 Pro and there is a free usage period which also resets every five hours based on the quota that you utilize. Considering Gemini 3 is one of the most powerful models right now, this is a pretty nice bonus and something that I assume only Google could do. The chat on the right has two modes, planning mode as well as fast mode. And this is a little bit confusing sometimes because I expect planning to work a little bit like it does in Cursor. However, unlike Cursor, I have had instances where it's tried to execute or change code inside of planning mode and I've heard online that other users have this issue too. It is new software and there are constant updates though and in the recent version that I'm using when I've tried to do some basic changes like creating styling here for the H2NP blocks, it has created a plan before executing it and it has required an additional prompt inside of planning mode to be able to start completing those changes. I do like the summary feature that always tests the changes that I request. like here it's opened up the web browser and checked the styling of the h2np block then created that walkthrough file with a summary of all the changes as well as this gif so i can view what that looks like in the browser without having to load it up myself i hope you enjoyed this video on google's anti-gravity ide there's still a lot to test out such as its inline editing where you can hit Control i use gemini 2.5 flash to make a quick change or use autocomplete with ai assistance i'm gonna continue to use anti-gravity for the next month i do like that it's based on VS Code, meaning I can install all my extensions and run up my projects very similar to how I used to, but I'm going to try and figure out exactly what are its strengths and weaknesses and then create a comparison of all the popular IDEs for 2006 to help you decide what to use.